Yo, what is up you guys? It's Grim here and welcome back to day 8 of the Redstone Academy. Last episode, we went over clocks. It's just basically all the clocks that I have been hiding from you throughout all the other videos and now I finally showed them to you. Obviously, you can just make your own or you can research more clocks. There are more advanced clocks, uh, like really advanced clocks that I have not shown yet and some that I don't even understand. However, that's for that video, so go ahead and check it out in the link below if you're interested. In this episode, however, you will learn various different types of pulse extenders and shorteners and how to use them. That is completely up to you. Now, just a friendly reminder, the link to each world is in the description of the respective video, meaning that day one will be in day one, day two, and day two, and so on. One last thing, this series is based in the better condition of Minecraft and results may vary between versions. However, the concepts do remain the same. With all that being said, let's get right into it. All right, you guys, so in front of me right here, I do have day eight, which is the pulse extenders and shorteners. So let's go ahead and get right into it. All right, guys, so this is me editing the video right now, and I just want to let you know that I do mess up a lot as far as word choice goes. Um, For starters, for some reason, I say that I play on the Java edition. Don't know where that came from. I play on the Bedrock edition. And then also, I say that uh, the word clock a lot. Just know that whenever I say clock, I mean pulse extender or pulse shortener or something like that. So I just wanted to clear that up. Uh, go ahead and enjoy the video. Day eight, pulse extenders and pulse shorteners. So we're going to start off with pulse extenders. This is a circuit used to extend the length of, of a pulse, which I mean, I figured was pretty self-explanatory, but I figured I'd put it here because, you know, I want to assume that everyone knows nothing just so that in case you didn't know it, you now do. Okay, so these are just a couple of simple repeater pulse extenders. Um. This one right here, I did use over there. However, this is just a different variation of it. Basically, it insta powers here, goes around, and uh, will actually power this block once it goes around. However, if you do use a repeater here, then uh, that's not going to work because this block is going to get hard powered, and that will infinitely uh, power everything right here because this repeater will take an output from that going around in a circle. And if you end up using a repeater here, that will fix it. However, now you will actually have a one take uh, delay, which a lot of people actually won't notice. So you can do that, or you can do what I did, which is have a piece of rest on here and here. And then it's instant, and it goes around, and it goes ahead, and, you know, uh, does its thing, you could say. All right, now right here is another one. This is a little bit of more of an old school one. Uh, Basically, you press the button right here, and it will instantly power this line, powering this block, powering, like, activating this. But then the repeater will then get the four tick delay, and then it will activate, and then that will make it stay on just a little bit longer longer than it was initially going to like as you can see here if i break this this means that the repeater is no longer going to power this block which powers this line as you can see the line turns on and off and then the repeater turns on and off afterwards and you just get that little bit more it's not much you can extend this longer if you want uh but you know it's not much but it does give just a little bit more of a pulse if that's all that you're looking for now we're going to go ahead and get into the comparator pulse extenders, which, uh, you know, this is pretty much what I use in all my builds. Uh, it's just a simple little pulse extender, two comparators like this. Uh, you can use a block or you can go ahead and surround the thing completely in redstone like this. And what it's going to do is obviously it's going to go into a comparator. And when a comparator uh, has an output right here, it's going to sense that putting it into here and then, you know, go ahead and lower one down going into this comparator which will then spit out the same thing as the back and then lower one down i've explained this before in the comparator video go watch that if you have not i do not really want to repeat uh you know everything so that's not repetitive and putting your head over and over again so yeah check out the comparator video if you want to know how these things actually work all right and uh the last thing is if you do want to put a block down like this first of all you can only put one down and it is going to have to be on like the no side of this because it because basically it's just going to hard power the block and then this it's never going to change here right here is going to be the only uh, thing that will actually decay and if you put two down it will just be infinitely powered and then if you obviously put one down right here then if you try and go ahead and surround it like this then it's just literally not even going it's just going to turn off right away and the reason I'm going so in depth with this one in particular is because it is probably going to be the one that you are using the most. So I do want to make sure that you know how it works. Now, right here, we have the exact same thing, except uh, as you can see here, it's just a little bit longer. And once it gets so long, sometimes you actually need to use a pulse extender to activate the pulse extender. Or if you just want to make it uh, to where uh, you don't want to do that and you are using a stone button, you can try a wooden button and that actually might fix your problem. But as you can see here, it will just make a ridiculously long pulse extender. I mean, it's extended to what this is. You can do up to five long if you use a wooden button, four long if you use a stone button. And then right here, we have just a little compact pulse extender. Let's say that you're doing a compact build. This will just extend the pulse ever so slightly. Up next, we have uh, my favorite as far as just 
usability uh it is the hopper clock pulse extender now i found this a while ago it, i will go ahead and look for the video and link it in the description of the person that i think was the original video i found i i honestly don't know i found this so long ago uh, but I do not take credit for this at all. All right, so what's going on here is this redstone torch is obviously powering this line. So when this turns off, uh, then it will allow the comparator to unlock. As you can see here, if I go and break this, you'll see the comparator will start taking an output, put it back down, and then I'm going to just have to, well, actually, it, it went ahead and cleared itself. So basically, as you can see right there, when I do turn off the torch, it will empower everything here. I'm powering this block, allowing items to flow out of it, which will then go into this hopper, but this hopper will be locked, meaning that items will not be able to flow out of it. And then uh, once this is completely full, as you can see here, uh, this comparator right here will actually shut off once all the items have flown out, which will then reset the entire circuit. So if I press the button, give it a second. Once all the items are out, the comparator turns off, resetting the circuit. All right, now the next section is monostable circuits, also known as pulse extenders, but a monostable circuit is used to shorten the pulse to a specific length based upon the needs of whatever you are doing. Now, this is a very popular one by Mumble Jumbo. I mean, you see them use it all the time. Uh, this is just a simple little monostable piston circuit, which basically uh, you're using, you have to at least use some kind of hard self powering block mechanics here. You can't just have two pieces of rest on, it won't work. And uh, what you do is you power this and it will just send out a little pulse, but at the same time, it will go ahead and actually power this. Uh, in the better condition, you have to use a piece of rest on dust on this side. On the Java edition, you can actually uh, use a repeater. As far as I know, I'm not sure if you can use a repeater on this side with the uh, with the Java edition, but you absolutely cannot with the Bedrock edition. As you see here, that just doesn't work unless you do something like this, which then it just gives you that. But as far as I know, uh, on the Java edition, this does work if you have a repeater like on this side, or I I don't know. I honestly don't know. But as far as I know, uh, Bedrock edition, th this is all that you need right here. All right, up next we have the comparator pole shortener. Uh, I do use this a couple times, but you know, I mean, I mainly just threw it in here so that you guys knew that the comparator can be used for a pulse shortener, which is basically just subtraction mode with something uh, just as strong as the back going into the side of it and looped around and obviously, you know, it will just give off a one tick pulse because it's getting powered and then one tick later it's getting turned off by a redstone repeater. All right, now right here, I do have some observers. Obviously, I didn't even write anything because uh, these are pulse shorteners, but I mean, you don't really want to use them because they're much better options. But uh, what I'm going to take the chance to tell you about is a uh, rising edge versus falling edge. So right here, we have a falling edge monostable circuit, which is a falling edge pulse shortener, which is also known as a pulse shortener that gives off a pulse when the button comes up from a press or the lever is being turned off from on meaning that like when a circuit is shutting down or like you know when uh the button goes in and then when it comes back out from being pressed that is the falling edge so if i go ahead and press this you'll see no output but when it comes back in after it's being pressed it pops back out then you're gonna get an output. That is a falling edge monostable circuit. I hope I made that as simple as possible. And then rising edge, uh, pretty much just the exact opposite is just what you'd expect. You press a button and you're gonna get an output and then you're not gonna get an output when the button comes back up. But uh, these are, and also, I mean, just a, a little fill in on the observer circuits. Uh, these are just very simple little pulse extenders. If you do wanna use them, obviously it's just a, a observer with a block moving behind it with a button in front it's a very simple circuit if you do want to put them into your rest on builds i mean obviously if they are bigger more complex contraptions you could use a piston on this side as well as a piston on that side and you know you could probably use it for something really useful i'm sure but for smaller builds there is a much better one and that being old reliable right here this is a repeater pulse shortener this is a uh, once again, not my design, but I do use this quite a lot, and it, I, I mean, this dates back to like 1.5 of Minecraft, maybe even sooner than that. I, I honestly don't know. There's been so many updates. Don't kill me in the comment section if I got something wrong there, but I'm pretty sure that this dates back to at least 1.5. Um, really, really smart design. Uh, this is uh probably the one that I do use the most. Uh, if not, then it's just the piston one over, over there. But ever since I switched to the Java edition, it's been that uh comparator or this and basically what goes on is this wrestling torch turns off but uh that is only one tick right so the repeater right here is going to uh be two ticks behind so when the first tick unpowers that will allow this torch to turn on for one tick but then the second tick will come around 
uh, from this repeater, which will then instantly turn it off. As you can see right there, the torch turns off, unpowers this, allows this to power up, then the resonant repeater powers, powering this block, turning it back off. All right, and the last section before we begin to, you know, my, my favorite picks is the button. So buttons actually, as I was mentioning earlier in the video, wood gives off a 15 tick pulse. Stone gives off a 10. As you can see here, if I try and time this to where I press the wood and then the stone, uh, and hopefully I can get the stone turn off first. So, well, as you can see there, they did turn off at the same time, but if I can get a look, as you can see there, okay, so the stone did turn off a little bit quicker there than the wood that should be a good one yep stone was off first now if we try and do that the other way stone is going to turn off way before stone is slightly shorter than wood all right and for my personal picks for the pulse extenders i have the uh comparator clock which this is what you will use for the majority of circuits uh obviously th this is expandable up to at least four uh, and it really gets the job done and if you do need something a little bit longer than this typically you're going to be looking at a hopper extender versus something like this but this is definitely the one that i recommend that you really use in all of your builds unless there's a smaller one uh like that little comparator but this is pretty much all that you need and then the next one obviously for the long extender we have the hopper clock which I'm not going to try and explain it again. You guys know how it works, or if you don't know how it works, you can rewind the video. But uh, this is definitely what I recommend for anything that you need like really, really long pulses for. And then uh, my personal pick for the shortener is all reliable right here. Uh, I still use this one to this day. I mean, there may or may not be smaller ones. I'm not sure, but I, I mean, I haven't introduced you to T flip flops yet, so I can't really show you uh, any T flip flop pulse shorteners as you could say you know like i said there are way more advanced ones but they do use multiple circuits at once which is why i am introducing you to them later you can look them up if you want obviously i mean i'm not stopping you but i am just trying to you know help you out in the best way possible by showing you only what you really need and not overloading you all right you guys and with all that being said that is going to wrap it up for this video today as always i do put a lot of effort into the rest known academy videos i want all of them to be up to par and better than the previous one so that you can continue your rest learning and continue to feel educated i want to make this as simple as possible for you guys and hopefully everyone will someday be able to learn wrestling through this series now with all that being said if you did like the video go and leave a like and if you loved it maybe consider subscribing i do make a lot of cool interesting wrestling contraptions and also have a let's play that has been taking off recently so with all that being said i've been grim and i will see you in the next one peace out